The, the singing and the music out here is quite a contrast to the, the convention centre. Do you think they'll hear you inside? You know, they come. <laughs> That's a good question. No, I, I don't know that they, they do follow what's going on. They know, they, they know that people are totally against the inaction going on inside those halls. And the people here are living the reality. We are singing. You know, if you listen to one of the songs, the women are singing, say, my mother was a garden was a kitchen girl, my father was a garden boy, and that's why I'm a socialist. I mean, they, they may not agree with the world, but the song is sending a message. We are here to struggle for our survival. Survival of the planet and of the future. And what do you think will come from today? I expect today we're going to have a very massive turnout of people from around the world to march on the streets of Durban. We expect that at the end of the day, the message will be consistent. We don't want an empty mandate from Durban. The mandate must come from the people. We keep hearing the word Durban mandate. We don't want an agreement that is empty, that doesn't show commitment from the rich, polluting, industrialized nations. They have to make a binding agreement here in Durban. Otherwise, the message will be we don't accept whatever else you come up with. And to people watching this live at home on, uh, in the UK and the United States, what would you say to them? You know, I believe the people of the United States want to do something to save the planet. But the government of the United States, the government of the UK, the governments in the European Union, they don't appear to know the reality of what the people in their countries are saying. And so we're saying, listen to the people, you represent the people, you cannot just listen to the corporates. They are playing the script of cooperation, the polluters. This cannot be allowed to continue. Anyway, thank you for speaking to us. A pleasure.
Can you tell us why you're here today? Today is the Global Day of Action. We are here to send a very strong signal to the leaders, to the negotiators in the Global Climate Change Conference that this is not the place to draw up an empty treaty or empty so-called Durban mandate. We want to tell the leaders that Africa is at risk, that the world, the planet is at severe risk. They have to take serious steps to cut emissions, to make legally binding commitments to, cut, to tackle global warming. Okay, Not just come around Durban, sit around in secret rooms and draw up an empty shell agreement. Do you think it's significant that these talks are taking place in Africa? Well, you know, it's very significant that the talk was here because Africa is the most impacted continent, the most vulnerable continent. Every single degree of temperature increase in the world multiplies in Africa. We're already exposed to droughts, to floods, to famines, and to all other challenges of global warming. And African leaders cannot afford to side with the polluting nations to continue to expose the continent to worse situations. Saturday morning here on the streets of Durban, there's a global call for climate action. Thousands of people are out and we're going to be listening to their messages. We are here to, to show the government that what he is doing is not correct by polluting our climate. And how, are you, how is the government polluting your climate? By using a lot of coal and destroying the climate.
Sorry, why, why are you here today? It, the weather is changing most of the time. So we don't want it. We want to come and start so to stop it. To slow it down. How, how are you affected by the change of weather? Most of the people are becoming a cancer, TB, because we inhale. My name is Mkwame Gedile, the Western Cape coordinator of the Right to Know. Uh -huh. We are here to oppose the fact that ESCOM and uh, Sasol are one of the key leaders in the delegation that would uh, engage um, the COP17. You know, saying that ESCOM is one of the biggest polluters in South Africa. They have no right to be here. Ne? And ESCOM um, has, 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 has made a loan with uh, World Bank and we, was, we, we demand the, the outcomes, you know, of the secret deal that they have with, 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 with IMF and World Bank. What, what did they agree, you know, in, in, in that agreement? And so we are saying that within COP17, there should be no secrecy. The green rooms should be banned in COP17 that leaders are, are forced into tight corners and they are, they are promised certain packages, you know, that would benefit them direct and, then, and not the country. So we are saying the green rooms should be banned within COP17. And um, what, what, what is ESCOM doing in South Africa? It's, it's providing electricity and it's using coal as a source of electricity. And ESCOM, in, my, in our view, is not serious at looking at alternatives, you know, like wind generated el electricity and, um, and other sources and other alternatives, you know. Uh, and so we are saying as the main polluter, they have no right to be the key negotiator at COP17. Uh -huh. And how does the use of coal impact people in South Africa? We know that in Pumalanga, where there's, there are big uh, um, electricity power stations, communities around that um, are being affected uh, with TB and um, chest-related diseases. No? And that um, there, there's a, there, there's a figure of hundreds of people dying, you know, as a result of the pollution that is happening in the immediate surrounding. And what would you call for instead of the use of coal? Alt other alternatives. There are other alternatives like wind and water-based um, alternatives. But do you think South Africa can meet its energy needs and can provide energy for everybody in poverty with renewable energies alone? With renewable energy, there are jobs that can be created. There's a campaign here called One Million Climate Jobs, um, you know, that suggests alternatives to, to, to the mainstream electricity source. And what's your message for people around the world watching this today? We are saying that when COP 18 comes to whatever country, they must take a stand, learning from the lessons from South Africa. And they should not allow their governments to bully them as the South African government did with us. There's been talk of the Kyoto Protocol dying in Africa, the only legally binding climate treaty dying here at these talks. Do you think that the people here and the energy here can secure a good agreement? Look, as long as Africa stands fragmented as it is, there's no chance you'll find that Botswana competes with South Africa and Swaziland against Lesotho and whatever. For as long as fragmentation in engagement with Euro, um, other countries, Africa is doomed. And the, the, the march here today is obviously a vibrant, colourful, energetic. As people who've lived through apartheid and who've struggled before, are you optimistic about the, the chances of success? No, 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 no. We know that um, the outcomes of COP17 um, have been negotiated already. But we are just showing our opposition to the discussion taking place there. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Sure.